are live. We are live. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a Linked Up on LinkedIn. I'm Peter Clark with Red TV, and uh, I hope everyone's doing good out there. We're streaming right now on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, whatever, and any other cool name you can think of. It's probably out there doing that. I am super, super pumped today. I am super pumped today, and here's why I'm super pumped today, because, you know, I love bringing uh, uh, great guests uh, to LinkedIn because uh, there's there's value there. There's value in talking to people who have built businesses and there's people um, who are in marketing and branding and um, all these kinds of things. Um, but this person, this person has done all of these verticals. This is what I love. This is what's so cool about this. Um, it's just it's just a fascinating story. I, I love what she's doing. I love what she's all about. CEO and founder of like a multi million dollar tech company in Canada. She's not she's not in uh, she's not in Silicon Valley. Award winning entrepreneur, startup Canada uh, in 2019. Social impact entrepreneur who really walks her talk. I love this. Here's some trivia for you. Has a degree in American Sign Language. Come on, right? And more cool tattoos. Honest to God, more cool tattoos than the combined members of Guns N' Roses. I swear to God, it's so, so, so cool. I'm so pumped to have you here. Please, everyone, welcome. Bobby Reset, how are ya? Boom, I'm Boom. here. <laughs> Good to see ya. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Likewise, this is, a. Uh, it's great. It's awesome. <laughs> I know you're probably thinking, it's just this is not your normal little interview. It's okay. This is all good. <laughs> We're amongst friends here. We're amongst yeah. friends. Stuff. I love it. It's great. Thank you so much for the amazing intro. Oh gosh, you listen, it's so easy. I had to leave half of it out. I mean, I'd be here all day just introducing you. So, so thank you for taking the time to uh, to speak to us today and more importantly to the audience because again, your story is fantastic and we're going to dig into a little bit about that about uh, companies, a company and companies. There's lots of things going on in your world. There's some things that are coming down the pipe even this week and over the next couple of weeks. So I haven't even talked about that. I'm going to leave that up to you, by the way, just so that uh, you can decide what you want to share and what you don't want to share. Uh, how we always start or how I always like to start here is because again, there's so much to talk about here. Uh, I want everyone to make sure that they, they can connect with you and they can go out to LinkedIn. And if you want to learn more about, uh, Bobby or Bobby Joe, do you prefer Bobby or Bobby Joe? I go by Bobby, but you know, my mom calls me Bobby Joe. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, that clarifies it right there. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not doing the mom thing. That's cool. But I like Bobby Joe. I think Bobby Joe is super cool. Love that. And when I said reset, I say reset, reset. Do you say reset? I heard people say it differently. How do you pronounce yeah, it? It's reset. Reset. That's reset. how I, yep. I've heard some others say reset and I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to make sure I did that right. So please go out to uh, Bobby's uh, LinkedIn profile, learn a little bit more about what she's all about, what she's done. And, uh, and then, you know, decided there's some synergies there and you can connect and so on. Um, just so much going on with you and virtual gurus. Let's start right there. Virtualgurus.com. Um, I, I want you to start just simply there, just to let people know who, who doesn't, you know, know anything about your company, the virtual gurus.com. Really? Tell us what that is. Tell us a little bit about what that is and, you know, the, the technology that's behind it and how you're helping people. Absolutely. Um, so the domain is the virtual gurus.com. And, uh, so virtual gurus is, is a, we call it, it's a talent as a service model. Um, and, uh, the talent platforms, are kind of the big next thing coming from tech. And uh, so what we've done is I've built a platform where freelancers, who we call our, our virtual assistants, can uh, get matched and work with uh, businesses and entrepreneurs of all sizes. So it can be mass corporations to a single entrepreneur who might just need an administrative back office support. What we do is we match the back office support to you using our algorithms. Uh, and then you work with that person in, in the uh, project system that we have. 
Now, the difference with us and many other companies is our social impact. So we hire and contract to a lot of uh, people who are from marginalized groups. So right now we have 95% of our contractors identify as female, 65% identify as or are people of color, part of the BIPOC community. Well, uh, 45% are uh, people who are LGBTQ or trans transitioning genders. Now, what we do is we essentially try to make sure that we're matching the talent. So we're giving these people work from home positions while offering the back office support to entrepreneurs, um, therefore providing all remote workers across Canada. So all of our workers are Canadian, whereas all of our clients are as far as Singapore, uh, UK, Australia soon, like we're we're going everywhere. We're going global, uh, which is the most amazing part of this. Yeah. Now, with the virtual gurus, is our we are also creating a task on demand app, which I'll get into a little bit later as well. Yes. Hold that so thought. Hold that. Yes. Yeah. Hold that thought. You know, <laughs> I, listen, I love, uh, but, but I want to go back to the technology just for a second to make sure that we don't skip over this part because we could literally spend the whole show just talking about oh, yeah. the amazing technology that's behind here. But this is far from. Um, the I, I'm, I'm thinking that people might think virtual assistants uh, mm -hmm. and they have a, a a an idea of what that is and right. it's just going out to find somebody uh on a website for you know to do a project for 10 bucks and they're gonna or they're gonna they're gonna be the person that's picking up your email or whatever but it goes far beyond that but i wanted to add just to make sure we didn't skip over the technology part that you talked mm -hmm. about when somebody buddy is looking for a virtual assistant your algorithm works differently than just someone going out and saying, hey, I need to hire somebody. Just mm -hmm. touch on that a little bit deeper for us so that so people understand why this one is different than anything else they might have seen out there. Right. So we are uh, solidifying the, um, the marketplace a little bit more. So what we've created was a marketplace. So let's say you, Peter, you go to the website and you select a virtual assistant. You can actually go and there's radio buttons and they'll say you need somebody that does social media, somebody that has a little bit of bookkeeping experience, and maybe somebody that can do calendar and executive management type services, right? right. So you'll select those and it will pull up the top 40 in our database of um, onshore Canadian virtual assistants that best match your, your needs. Now, what sets us aside is that all of these people have been pre-vetted. Um, so they go through a massive pre-vetting process. Um, and if they don't pass the pre-vetting process, what we do is we send them to virtualgurusacademy.com. Right. And from there, they go through and they scale up. And then they can come through and become uh, workers for us. So the whole goal is, is that we're being able to provide the work to the people by also setting them up for success while making sure that we're providing top talent to our clients. Now, the difference of the tech of what we've done is, is you only pay for the time worked. So let's say you get your virtual assistant to do your calendar arrangement, answer your emails, contact a few of your clients and set appointments. Let's say it only takes her 22 minutes. Well, that's only 22 minutes that's billed towards your actual package. And it's based on a monthly subscription model. So you're actually paying for 100% productivity and not somebody just sitting there waiting for you to give them work. Um, on our end, what we do is we logistically move them around. So that person can say, well, I want to be available because my children are in school from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And then they make themselves available for that time. And logistically, our systems make sure that we're matching based on their time allowance. Right. So we're doing all that work in the back end. Yeah, see, and there's two really key points there for me that stand out. There's multiple there. But two that stand out <laughs> is, first of all, you make sure that the people that are supplying these services are meet a minimum standard, meaning that if they if they bring the skills that that meet and exceed your 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 standards, great. If they don't, you are willing to put them into sort of a training program, an internal mm -hmm. proprietary training program, that makes sure that if I hire somebody and a person that's on the other side of the country hires somebody, mm -hmm. we're getting sort of the same standards from each. So I just think that's really really super yeah. cool, and uh, I love that idea. Yeah. You brought up something that you that was so important. It was literally I wanted to talk about it, but <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll push to find out a little bit more why because I think this is so important. Um, especially uh, in the 21st century here where, you know, I think business needs to to play a, a very specific role in a lot of the challenges that we have. You know, mm -hmm. your personal journey is basically coming from the idea that you were a freelancer and you decided you, you decided it chose you to become a high tech, you know, entrepreneur. And, and we'll and we'll chat about that a, a little bit more. But, mm -hmm. you know, one of the one of the things that you talked about is your onboarding, the idea that you have a mandate, a personal mandate and a philosophical business or a business philosophy that says that we want 
basically our team to be 95% women, 65% mm -hmm. uh, people of color, and then 45% uh, part of uh, LGBTQ. So, mm -hmm. so why, why is that so important to you? I mean, you could have just started your tech company and just kind of went down the path of getting it up and running and then go down that path. But you started out with that as a mandate. Why is that important to you as a leader and as, you know, as a human being? Why is that important? Yeah. You know, uh, this is probably one of my favorite questions to answer. And in all honesty, um, I mean, I'm a marginalized folk myself. I'm an indigenous woman. Uh, I have tattoos everywhere. Um, I okay. am LGBTQ, like I'm part of the LGBT uh, community. And I'm a woman in tech and I'm a CEO of women in tech, right? So those things alone is, um, you know, I hate to say it, but like uh, my goal here is I wanna break the stigma on, on, on prejudice and, and how people like myself just because I am a person of color and this and that, I still have the smarts to be able to create something. And I really want to be able to give work back to the people that have also struggled, you know, because years ago when I was out looking for work, I was always getting no. And you know what? It's uh, administration is my back end, but I'm not exactly, I don't know if you know the show uh, Suits, but I'm not exactly Donna from Suits, right? Like <laughs> I'm not all like nice and, you know, and it's like, but I noticed people were saying no to me because of that. And it's, right. it's, it's, it, that was my mandate that I've set out for myself. I said to myself, one day, I'm going to create uh, jobs for people who have struggled to find work. And and now I have the platform to do that. So no better way than to do it the way we are doing it right now. And, uh, you know, we have a crazy, crazy belief in our social impact at Virtual Gurus. In fact, our culture is based around our social impact. So when we all joke and we laugh and we hang out, um, we are a company that is built on diversity and inclusion. And it's great to see that. Like we have people mm -hmm. who couldn't find work because they were in the middle of transitioning genders. And I mean, we don't, nobody knows how that feels to mm -hmm. want to be your real self, to go and apply for the job that you are way more than qualified for and to get denied because of the way you look, you know? So it's, it's important to me that I stay true to that. Um, well, at the same time, it's important to me to give those that have, been forgotten or often less at the, left at the bottom of the barrel to give them an opportunity. Now that said, we don't just say, oh no, because you don't fit this criteria, you can't work here. We have people from all walks of life working for yes. us. And uh, we just make it so that everybody respects each other and that we're all a team, you know? And, and I think if every company out there did that, they would notice such a huge change, you know? Um, and I think that that's it, is, is what can your company do to bring in that social impact because every company has a way to have impact, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like because I have a voice that I would be silly not to use it. Oh, mm -hmm. I love that. I just, you know, and that speaks to me to just as much as you as a human being, as it does for your philosophy as a CEO. So that's why, mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that you humanized your approach of creating your business, which, which mm -hmm. brings them both together. I, I love it. Let's talk about that for a second about business mm -hmm. as a force for good. Cause you touched on that about if other CEOs and other leaders kind of did that, you know, we have so many, Oh my gosh, we have so many giant problems in the world, obviously. Yeah. Um, and you just touched on some of them about people feeling marginalized and disenfranchised and so on. And and I think there's a lot of brands out there in the last five to 10 years are starting to see an economic value uh, that's Ooh. associated with being, um, you know, a part of the solution, if you will, as opposed to just, um, you know, part of actually doing nothing or being silent. So right. what messaging do you have? Uh, for leaders and or uh, of organizations who are kind of still sitting on the fence about putting themselves out there or their brand um, and, and putting the brand out there, basically saying we care about this, this and this, whether it's the environment or poverty or in your case, inequality in the marginalized. What would you say to people that are kind of sitting there thinking, I'm not sure if I want to associate my brand that way? Right. Has it been, what, what kind of conversation would you have with them? You know, I would challenge them to sit you know, go in, in, and sit at your desk and at your computer and whatnot and, and literally hash out who all of your employees or contractors, employees and contractors are. Hash them all out and pull up the statistics of each of these people. So do you have people of color on your team? Do you have females on your team? Do you have, you know, in exactly the same, cis white males on your team? Do you have all that on your team? Are you diversifying your team? And if you look at your team, and you have no people of color on your team, you have no uh, females on your team, no whatever, then you have to ask yourself, are you diversifying your team enough to make an impact, right? It's the, it goes the same way. And I'm not just saying it about more of the cis white male community or anything. I'm saying, let's say if I started a community and I have my company and I looked at my team and I saw that all I have was females, 
I'm mm -hmm. going to say, hey, you know what, Bobby, you're not diversifying your team. We have to diversify your team. And uh, so I challenge everybody to, to look at who your, your team is, who are your, your key players, who are your whole company, who are your clients, how are you diversifying? And uh, you'll notice a huge difference when you you do do that. Um, you'll notice a huge difference in in your own personality, but in in the way you connect with people, um, you know, if, if you do that. When I was speaking at another event, I actually had challenged uh, the people, and I think there's about 400 people that were listening in on it and said, you know, put your statistics on your website. So if you go to our website, you'll see our statistics are there. We're 95% women, 65% uh, BIPOC people of color, um, while we're 45% part of the LGBTQ community. And, you know, I put that there because that's what our mission value is. We, we are a people first company. And, um, you know, I, if I put it there, then I'm holding my whole team accountable. I'm holding my onboarding team accountable holding everybody accountable that we're going to be a part of diversifying the community, the, the, the system. Right. So I challenge everybody to do that as well. Oh, that is fantastic. You know, and, 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 and hearing a CEO and a founder talk like that about the idea of holding themselves accountable. And like you said, putting it out in public, putting mm -hmm. it on the website, attaching it to your brand, the name, the logo, yeah. whatever the case would be, it kind of, it, it 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 leaves less room for maneuvering around that in a public setting, right? So mm -hmm. I, I love the idea that you're, like you said, you're willing to put it out there and and so on. So really important. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I read somewhere, um, you know, just getting back into your life, into your story. And again, everybody, she's, she's so well written about now. I mean, you're, you're, again, congratulations on everything that's coming down the pike. You know, all of a sudden this, there's an amplification of your company and your name specifically, um, you know, certainly in Canada and business startup world and so on. So congratulations on that. So, so I read somewhere, um, I just wanted to dig in different parts of your life, but you know, I read somewhere that you, you had your first job when you were 16 years old. And what was interesting about that job, again, most kids were, you know, go out and find a, a you know, in a restaurant or, or doing something of that nature, but you worked as a youth coordinator, uh, mm -hmm. for after school programs. And specifically, if I'm reading that right, uh, inner city and you're know, basically kids that were considered at risk. Yeah. Um, at 16, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. So I'm just wondering, you know, what kinds of things do you think you learned, uh, at that age about being around people, uh, who were yeah. considered marginalized and disenfranchised? What do you think you learned? You know, I think what it, it did, and, you know, I, I got to thank my mom for, for getting me to, you know, pushing me to go that way instead of going to like a fast food restaurant. I mean, and, and to work there for my first job. But yeah, I was a, um, basically worked for the inner city youth at Re in Regina, Saskatchewan at the Core Ritchie Center. And, um, you know, I, I think what it taught me was to see people for who they are and not judge based on who, what society puts them at. You know, um, as an indigenous woman myself, like I, it's often, you know, I'm often like, it's it's easy for me to walk into a Canadian tire and, and have a floor walker on me within minutes. And same with my mom when, you know, because we're indigenous women and, and you know, unfortunately that's just the way the society has put it on us. And, 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 and you know, if, if it starts with people like myself breaking that. And uh, so I'm really thankful that my mom put me into those positions and uh, helped me get into that and realizing that uh, that's what I really wanted to do. I really wanted to help people who were seen as much less than what they really were, you know? Mm. Um, so. Well, I worked with a lot of inner city youth who were struggling. Uh, some were, were young, young kids that were drug addicts, some who had really broken homes and, and some who had very no homes. And, uh, you know, it, it opened my eyes wider to being that I just, I want to work with people and I want to make people feel good. And I want, I want to be that person. When I was doing that, I was also working at a school for severely disabled children in Regina. And I was a teacher's assistant at the same time. So I uh, worked with, yeah, uh, children that were were deaf and that, in fact that's actually where my passion for sign language came and I right. started getting into sign language from there so I started realizing like the whole human aspect of it and really liked it oh I love that yeah. I tell you why you know this part of me as you can see from behind me here uh you know guitar piano I mean music yeah Music, and, yeah. and I'll tell you, I, as an auditory person, I had this super, super soft, sensitive side of, <laughs> of appreciating when uh, the fact that there are people out there who, who do not experience sound the way you and I do, or maybe yeah. other most of us do. And, and the fact that you, I, I've always had that sense too. So I, I really resonate with why it touched you like that. Cause yeah. 
um, I always think of myself, think of my experiences and even what we're doing now. I mean, we're having this conversation and for those that are hearing impaired and, uh, and maybe even completely deaf and so on, it's, it's a very difficult thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, for you to recognize that at a young age and then to, that's fantastic. So I, I applaud you for that. I didn't know that part about uh, working uh, as a, as a school aide as well. So or yeah. a student aide. that's fantastic. It was a TA. It was, and it was so what do you think you learned about yourself during that time? I mean, you learned about other people, how they felt. What do you, what do you think you took away? Are you using anything that you took away from there today in what you do? Yeah. You know that, I mean, it took away the fact that, you know, I would, I'm considered privileged. You know what I mean? And um, it's when when you're in those situations and you you think about, wow, you know, how privileged am I and how can I not act that way? And how can I how can I just, you know, be real about this and, 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 and look at everybody as being real people and and not judging? And, you know, because, gosh, I think if I've had it bad, I haven't, you know, <laughs> and it's kind of like a check yourself type moment, you know, and. And oftentimes when I feel that maybe, you know, I am acting a little bit more privileged even now, later on in life since that's happened, um, mm. I often have to check myself and be like, hey, you know what, Bobby, like, you know, yeah, you're doing good for yourself. You're doing things, but not everybody has that. So let's, let's, how can we help people? And, and, and that's kind of probably where it came. It was just a, I think it, it just brought into my passion for people, you know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm very thankful for that. And I mean, I did go and get my sign language degree and, and all of that fun stuff. But, uh, and then I ended up traveling the world and uh, I hitchhiked and lived in a van and lived on the side of mountains and, you know, and, and, and had my fun. But then here I am now, my, you know, <laughs> my, yeah, oh, no, you're in a yeah. <laughs> oh, the cool thing is you're not living in a van. That's cool down by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. Yep. That's the, and, and like you said, all of those experiences all have certainly culminated to where you are today. There's no doubt about it. I mean, we yeah. look back, we, it's e as the old saying goes, it's easier to look back, uh, or sorry, you can only connect the dots by looking backwards. It's hard yeah. to kind of sometimes see them forward, but when you look back, you can connect the dots and you have a, a different perspective of where you yeah. are. So it sounds, like, as it sounds like gratitude is a big part of your life as well. I it hear is. that in, in what you're saying. So I, I super appreciate that. Let me ask you this question uh, about being a founder, a CEO, and, and you just talked about the fact that you know you didn't come up, you, you know, obviously didn't weren't raised privileged, if you will, and and you traveled and and you had these experiences. Um, one of the things during the experience of startup that I read somewhere that you talked about, and and there are basically two things that that you said, and I'll I'll kind of I'm not going to quote them exactly, but here's the two things you said. You said if I if I started over with my business, so this is more like a founder's question, CEO question. Um, if I could start over, I would surround myself with, you know, amazing supportive people, people that you have in your life right now. Cause you said that being a founder, which I totally can relate to, or any entrepreneur, solopreneur for sure, uh, can be quite lon lonely and yeah. exhausting. So you'd find supportive people. And then in the same sort of interview, you suggested that your biggest setback was trusting the wrong people, people when you first started. Yes. So I'm just wondering for people who are solo entrepreneurs or founders out there, what, what advice do you have about reconciling those two things? Because of course you're, you're saying, I want to do everything and I need to keep control, but I need other people. Uh, and as soon as you let go, if you trust the wrong person, then it goes, how do you bring those two worlds together? That's one of the, you know, it's like trial and error on my part, but um, you know, I, I will back that up. Like I will start from, you know, I, I think being a founder is a very lonely yet satisfying um, thing, but I, I really do feel that it is, is it can get very lonely. Um, and I'm not saying lonely in a way of, uh, you know, I need somebody to love and this and that. It's more like lonely of like, you, there's so much that needs to be done in this, in, in, as a startup founder, when you're building something from scratch, especially in the technology industry, but there's like, you, you can't, really talk to anybody about it. You can't really, um, you know, explain to everybody the trial and errors as a founder that you're having. Um, without, you know, you got to keep a lot of stuff into yourself. You got to keep a lot of your thoughts. You got to, you know, and uh, same with my team. Like they all know that I struggle a little bit with that. They know that I struggle with um, kind of essentially feeling lonely and and they know that. Um, they try to help me as much as possible through it. And and I think it's, it's, it's big, for us to acknowledge and understand why we feel that way, because, you know, what can we do to make ourselves not feel that way? Um, 
So what I've done was I've, I've signed up for groups that are uh, technology groups like the A-List. Um, there's a lot of really good platforms out there that you can get support from other people who are also founders in the tech community. And um, you go into, uh, we do sessions where you have weekly sessions with others and other founders. And you talk about what your mishaps for the week were, um, the troubles that you're having, this and that. And, and you kind of look at each other for support. And so that's really helped me a lot. Um, the other thing is, is, is I have surrounded myself lately with a lot of advisors, uh, and advisors are the kind, these are the people that I can reach out to when I am struggling with a decision, because I mean, I have 18 full-time employees, um, mm -hmm. plus I have over almost a 350, 400 active contractors working right now, 3000 that are pre-vetted in the database work ready for work. Mm -hmm. And it's tough, right? Because you 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 have a lot of people that are, I, I don't like to say under me because um, we're all equal at my company, but, you know, essentially you have a lot of people there. And uh, so I think looking at support groups like the A-List, um, Startup Calgary, uh, Platform Calgary, all these companies come together and they you can work with other founders and really kind of build a community. Yeah. And uh, those have really helped. But yeah, at the early days, I made the mistake of bringing somebody in as a CEO and, um, you know, unfortunately, me and this person just, the visions, my vision was what my vision was, but his vision was, and yeah. <laughs> or if just, you know, it doesn't matter. Like you said, I, I appreciate, yeah. like you said, we're not, we're not, there's no right or wrong here. If, if no. you, had, you had a vision for where you wanted to go. You needed yeah. help. You chose somebody and then you found out, wow, this is a yeah. complete vision. And right? it's and it's not necessary to say that he's a bad person because oh, he's oh. not. It's more of less, our visions weren't connected. And it's okay for your visions not to meet. However, you got to be able to check in with each other and make sure that you're staying on that same vision um, or at least a little bit of the vision with maybe going off the path a tiny bit. But in this case, the vision was going to drones and all this kind of crazy stuff that it was like, whoa, <laughs> that's not us. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, the one thing that I was afraid about was taking my own power back for the company. Oh. And, you know, that is my... One major advice to everybody who's watching this is, is don't be afraid to take your power back out of this company that you founded, you know, and, and it's, it's okay, you know, and at that point was, I realized that, you know, I needed to um, separate ways from this person and, and, and actually become the CEO of my own company. And so I, I the reason I had brought him in as CEO is because I didn't have experience, right? Right. Um, yeah, no, but, listen, this is great. Yeah. Keep going. This is awesome. Yeah. This is really but, going but, in the right path. Yeah, but now I realize that the best person to be the CEO of the company is the person who founded it at first, right? Especially we're probably going to take it to the big sell it, get acquired. Yeah. But nobody's better to be that CEO than you. And you need to have confidence in yourself. And I didn't have confidence in myself. I do now, but I didn't. And, uh, you know, it was certainly an eye opening experience to oh. realize holy crap, I have to get confidence in myself. And, you know how many people you just everyone's sitting there going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. because i'm saying it to myself i i hear you so completely thoroughly that that is such a normal thing that someone who has an idea and a vision for what it should do or is is at the beginning um mm -hmm. looking for somebody who can help them get there and you're thinking yeah. you know what it's got to be you it's got to yeah. be you. It's got to be I, you. I agree because, that too, but, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing that I, I know a lot of people struggle with and, and you know, is you can found something and, and it's like, but do you, you know, it's it, having that confidence to be able to say to yourself, you know what, I can do this and like believe in yourself. And I'll admit the first two years of virtual gurus, I really didn't believe in myself fully. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that struggled and that showed. Um, whereas now it's my confidence is just, through the roof but at the same time i'm going to always remain humble about it and uh, and it's important to me to be able to show my confidence to be able to make my team have confidence and uh you know now it's completely changed but i mean if you look at where i was last year i'm completely a different person than i was last year too so wow. <laughs> I, you even, learn so much even just in 2020 so just even in 2020 you feel that yeah. you've grown exponentially 100 percent yeah. Can you expand on maybe why? Like, it, it, was it simply the pandemic and being able to have to shift your shift your thinking about how you conduct business, or was it or was it more of a personal growth? Do you think? I think it was, for me it was a personal growth, but I think it was the personal growth that helped me make sure that I could lead my team through the pandemic, because uh, that is a really scary thing when you are going like this and you're you're hockey sticking your way up, and all of a sudden a pandemic hits and you're like, you know, and. Right. And you're watching your numbers fall and fall and fall and fall. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I think, you know, if I wasn't confident, if I, if I didn't learn a lot more about myself in this, I think I would have crashed and burned a little bit through the pandemic, but I didn't, I had my moment of um, despair and my moment of, Oh my God. And then I realized my team was panicking and I'm like, wait a minute. And I checked myself and I was like, Bobby, you can't panic because they're panicking. You can't panic. You're the one person right now that cannot panic. Um, and so I had to, I had to cool myself, cool my jets, meditate, relax on it. And I had to, had to get myself together and collect myself. And, um, and then we pivoted and then all of a sudden our numbers were going back up. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think I would have been able to, I, I would have been able to lead my team through that, but I just don't think I would have been able to successfully lead my team through the pandemic and having to pivot while losing all my clients at the same time um, successfully, if I wasn't that confident and had that confidence in myself. Good for you. Know. You, you know, yeah. and it also, I'm, I'm thinking uh, that you basically, you know, metaphorically and maybe even physically, you looked around, you're like, it's just me. I mean, yeah. I have to, so I'm, I have to make that decision. So yeah. I just love that. I lo- and I yeah. think there's so many people out there, whether you're a solo entrepreneur, maybe you, if you work totally on your own or you have like staff in your case and people relying on you from, from not even just the client perspective, but the people mm-hmm. that are actually doing the work and then the people that are supporting at your head office and all these kinds of yeah. so many different things. But even if you're by yourself, you have to, someone actually has to step up and, and, and stay true to that vision. And so you do. Uh, I love yeah. that. I love that. Let me ask you this. This is this is so this kind of goes re, you know, I'm glad you mentioned about 2020 and you're able to kind of stretch yourself and move in that direction. I know you have a and I love your personal motto by the way. I'm I, I'm going to borrow it <laughs> somewhere down the road. It's going to be a t-shirt so I just love it. It's <laughs> awesome. It's be bold. So your personal motto is be bold, be mm-hmm. brave and be mm-hmm. you. Okay? I yep. love that. I really do. I love that. So let's let's expand on that. How about for 2020? Because you just mentioned 2020. Uh, so I hope I'm not putting you on the spot, but I, <laughs> you mentioned 2020. <laughs> and see, it's been, a, it's been a fascinating 12 months. Let's look at the last 12 months or, or so yeah. let's, and take it there. Let's go through each of those and maybe if you can share with us what each of those mean to you or give me an example. I, I'd really love to hear an example of what you, what you mean when you say that. So can you think of... Um, an experience in 2020 or in the last 12 months where you had to be bold, where you had to be bold? You know, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously with during the pandemic where we are like what virtual gurus does is we service businesses and entrepreneurs. Right. So um, where all of our clients are businesses, entrepreneurs, which means they have clients, so they're losing their clients and then they have to cancel services with us because everything's going down. You don't know the way the market's going. Um, Everybody's pivoting. And, uh, you know, being bold through that is really important. I mean, obviously you can still be a vulnerable human, like we're all vulnerable and we should be vulnerable and we shouldn't be afraid to show our vulnerability either. Right. Um, But at the same time, when you're leading a team, I think it's important to, to be bold and to have to kind of hold yourself up to the standards of, of, you know, you got to kind of carry your team on your shoulders um, because that's the way leaders should be. And, and I mean, I look up to them and they carry me on their shoulders more than they even know through the pandemic. But, um, if I can be bold, then they'll be bold. And then the people mm-hmm. below them will be bold not below them. I hate saying that word, but you know, their employees yeah. below them because all of sure. them have managed or all of them are managers of people below them in our company where we have people, you know, like, you know, so it's, it's, you got to, the there's a hierarchy, yeah, the hierarchy yeah. right. Exactly. Sense. So, sense. you know, I think it's important to not only be bold, but for me, I when I was pitching and I was raising my funding round. So okay. in February, I closed 1.25 million of just a small little seed round. Wow, fantastic! Um, I I couldn't. A lot of people were saying no to me mm-hmm. because they didn't think the virtual groups had the scalability. Okay. And it well, it beat me down. It also picked me up because I reminded myself, you know what? Go in there and be bold, Bobby. Be bold. Be you. You can do it. Because people were. I, I wanted to make sure I could go into these meetings being myself, wearing really good shoes, wearing dressed like with my t-shirts and my arm sleeves rolled up because that's just my style, you know, like. <laughs> hold and, on a second. Uh, just hold on. Hold that thought. Yeah. What do you mean really good shoes? What does that mean? Is, I, uh, I've heard you say that time. before. I was like, wait, you yeah. might, you love shoes, sh- shoes like a. I love shoes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I always make good. sure I wear good shoes in any meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I love, well, they say that about a human. They say you, you can tell the, about a person literally just with by their shoes, shoes right? right? And I would always make sure, but I'm wearing good shoes and he still said no to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. But, shoes. Right. Like it's, you know, but um, so I think that's part of the whole be bold. And I think be brave is is 
if I can tell a little bit of a quick story, I am yeah, notoriously please. known and I'm okay to tell it because you can actually just Google basically and, and you'll hear about it. But um, I had choked on my demo day. So in, in the startup community, you uh, go into accelerators because you learn to really bring your business forward in the technology. Mm -hmm. And at the end of every accelerator, you have what you call a demo day, which means you have to get on stage and pitch to investors and to, to a crowd oh, of people. Sure. Um, I am hugely, hugely stage fright. So really? yes, but it's just funny. I've gotten so much better since then. Yeah. Um, five minutes, 10 minutes before I was supposed to go on stage and Arlene Dickinson and all these big investors were in the crowd. I'm like, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. I was like, nope, not doing it. Okay, so hold you on. So you're backstage. You're about to go on. You look yep. out. You're seeing some of these. You're like, I'm not doing it. I can't do this. I'm not doing it. I walked out. I left. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Did yeah, you? I, did. I you walked out of the building. 100% choked on my demo day. Oh, wow. So I'm notoriously known for that in the startup community. Now, I here's the that. thing. That ate me up. That ate mm. me alive for, for months after. So I needed to basically redeem myself. So I went to Montreal. This was two months later. Went to Montreal, and I was so scared, but I went into a pitch competition. And I basically told myself, Bobby, be brave. Be brave. You can do this. You have to do this. Be brave, because your company's not going to go forward unless you can do this. And uh, so I made myself be brave, and I went on stage, and I went into a pitch competition, and I became the runner-up for a $100,000 prize. So that was part of the whole be brave part. And then, you know, the BU is... When I was pitching and a whole bunch of, you know, just being in the community and being who I am as an Indigenous woman, LGBT, um, you know, I realized I was trying to be somebody that wasn't me. I was trying to mm. dress differently than wh who was me. I was trying to be different. Mm. I was trying to impress. And I, I realized how uncomfortable I looked after seeing myself on camera sometimes and this and that. And I was like, that's not me. Um, and so that's where it's like be you. So the moment I started being me and who I was and not being afraid to be me and being, you know, talking like, like this with panels or on yes. interviews and being me was when I started realizing my confidence went through. So that's essentially how the be bold, be brave, be you came. I love that. Well, first of all, to, the takeaways for me is cool shoes. Gotta have cool shoes. I love that. <laughs> I love that. But you know, what's interesting is that, is that just even admitting what you just did there i think is going to help somebody somewhere um because um i think in life also and this is probably more philosophical but certainly in business uh nothing can really hurt your future for opportunities of growth and and, and these kinds of things when, when you're carrying around the baggage of regret yeah and, and you have this regret it's like wow i wish i would have done that in that situation or i wish i would have said that to that person when I had a chance or yeah. I wish I didn't say that or whatever, whatever this there's, there's a regret that you carry around and you're thinking, and then it starts to eating away at your confidence. Um, and then it chews away at your vision and, and, and then you start thinking, wow, none of this actually matters and no one cares. So I need to move along. Uh, but the fact that you just talked about that now and you use that almost as a calling card to say, yeah, I've been there. Um, yeah. but I needed to not only be bold, but I need to tell myself to be brave. So yeah. I think there's something fascinating about watching CEOs and founders like yourself. Um, but, but seeing other ones that maybe are 15, 20 years down the road from where you are right now, we think, yeah. well, they, they didn't deal with what I'm dealing with. Right. Do you find that right. with yourself that you see other people that maybe may, maybe they're mentors, maybe people you look up to and you think, well, they're not, they, they've not dealt with what I've dealt with, but they probably have. You know, that's the thing. I think if everybody has in their own way. Um, everybody has a story. And I think that if every single person respected everybody's story and, and listened to their story, that, you know, it would make the world a whole different place. Because really, like, my story is so much different than your story and so-and-so mm -hmm. story and so-and-so story, so -and -so story. And everybody's story has a story. And I, I think that if, if, yeah, I think if we just listened to everybody's story and respected everybody's story, the world would be so different. Yeah, yeah. Be, be you know. Lot. Better, a lot better. Well, you yeah. know, I'm going to make sure that we jump on uh, both of the mm -hmm. websites that are coming up, and I'm going to jump yeah. actually into your newest project if we can. Um, so we've been talking about everybody, just so you know. Obviously, is is the virtual guru. So virtual gurus is is the main 
business that we've been talking to Bobby about. Um, but you have something super cool that's just kind of being <laughs> launched and it's coming down the pipe. So we'll talk about that. And then I'll bring these on uh, on screen so that people can see the websites and stuff. But I want you to kind of walk and sort of talk through it right now if you can. Talk to us about your latest project, this whole thing. Uh, I think it's it's going to be big, everybody. It's yeah. called Ask Betty. So tell us a little bit about where that came from and and <laughs> the, its mandate of how it fits with uh, the, the virtual gurus. Okay. Well, Betty is a cat. Um, Betty is a cat bot, actually. Okay. Um, so Ask Betty came along the, the derivatives of, of if you ask Jeeves back in the days, you know. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I remember but anyway, that. <laughs> yeah, so with virtual gurus, one thing is, is we're a subscription-based model. So when you sign on, that's your dedicated, your dedicated model, and it's a dedicated monthly subscription. Um, so it just continuously keeps going. However, not every client really needed um, a dedicated VA. They just needed one-off tasks, you know, um, tasks that AI can't do, um, you know. So we decided to build Ask Betty. And I was going to name it Betty, and then we were going back and forth, and I was like, Ask Betty. Um, and Ask Betty is a task on demand um, app that you can use in Slack right now. It's coming soon to Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, and uh, Microsoft Teams. But oh, for yeah. now, it's in Slack. And uh, so what you could do is let's say you say, hey, Betty. And Betty will be like, hey, Peter, how can I help you? And you'll be like, you know, I'm just getting ready to interview somebody. Can you transcribe this for me? And Betty will say, sure thing, Peter. And they go and transcribe it, and then they pass it through. Well, it auto charges your credit cards, and it's a it's a um, task credits is what we call them, and it's a bundle. So you can order four tasks, eight tasks, uh -huh. whatever. And the tasks are in increments of fifteen minutes. Um, hey Betty, can you book my appointment at the hair salon? Hey Betty, can you do this? Like every small little tiny task, um, uh -huh. and then Betty just gets it done for you. Now we have people working in the back end, other the actual Betty taskers is what we call them. And uh, they're doing the work. And so these are people where we're building partnerships with marginalized communities. Um, right now, we have a lot of students in there. So while they're doing student work, they need to make, uh, you know, a little bit of money to because they're students. So we have a lot of students that are doing the tasks in there right now and uh, in between classes and such. So that's really good. And uh, so Betty is launching actually physically fully launching in the next week or so. There's uh, going to be some press releases going out on it. It's going to be great. Um, but Betty is live for now for anybody who wants to test it for free. Okay. So awesome. I just threw it up on the screen to, here. I just threw it up on the screen if you wanted to kind of walk us through. <laughs> I love the tag. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> yeah. It's super awesome, isn't it? See, look at the cat <laughs> bot. She's so pretty. But if you, um, you know, you just need to get shit done, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So if you have Slack, you can just click and you can add it to Slack and follow the commands. Now, there will be an area where you'll be prompted to pay, and that's where you can put in the four free tasks. And uh, in here, this is what the back end will look like. So then you can see that you have task credits. And um, you don't necessarily go into the dashboard as much, only when you need to up and add credits and whatnot. Uh, but you usually you do the rest of it through the front face on Slack. Right. Okay. And um, so it can be anything, like exactly, like dietary restrictions. You can get catering done, and you know, your birthday, yeah. your birthday coming up, and call you want to get lawyer. a gift. Call my stock, uh, call my stock person, call my yeah. lawyer, <laughs> whatever you it know, is. She, they do everything. She does everything. Um, and it's got a client portal in there, so uh, you can go and see the portal. But uh, when you're in the Slack, all you simply do is just say, hey, Betty. And if you scroll down a little bit, yeah, yeah, you'll see um, – what it looks like from the Slack perspective, so you could see how easy it works. Okay, so, so here's the, the bundles. Package. Yeah, here's the bundles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We call them itty bitty Betty tasks. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, and as, as an example, so 15 minute itty bitty, so 15 minute task. So, you get four 15 minute tasks, or is that four yeah. tasks within 15 minutes? No, four 15 minute tasks. Four 15 minute tasks. Yeah, and uh, the OS average task, task. Got it. Yeah, and the average task will be about eight to ten minutes, depending on what you your task is. It could even be two minutes. Um, and then uh, you know you could just keep filling it up. It doesn't um, uh, it doesn't reoccur, so you just put it in as you need and purchase credits as you need. Right. So like so that's. Right. When you buy this so for the best value, let's say you spend $84, you got these, you got these basically 12 credits. If you, what, what do you call those again? I, individual tasks? Uh, uh, you have itty bitty Betty tasks just sitting there. So <laughs> then you can just use the task as you need. So if you're on the go and you open your Slack and your ad, 
You can right. be like, hey, Betty, I'm going into a meeting. I need this. And then that's what it looks like right there. So Finley is asking Betty, um, what stuff can I take off your plate today? And just came out of a long board meeting. Can you transcribe these meetings? Boom. And then Betty says, here's your transcription. Done. Wow. Right. Cool. So, oh, um, you know, there's, the there's, there. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all real people, real tasks. These ones, these aren't even fake, which is really oh, good. These are okay. all, oh, this, okay. This is the real deal. Okay. This is yeah. super cool. Everybody again, ask yeah. Betty uh, dot IO. So I just want to make sure everyone sees the website here, but that's an example of literally how that communication is happening. Uh, at that moment in this particular case with, yeah. when this person said, Hey Betty, and it says, Hey, great to see you. You know, what can I take off your plate? And then mm -hmm. talk about transcription or proofreading, for example, Hey, maybe you have an article that's going out or something you're posting. I'm just looking, I'm thinking, yeah. that. okay, can you proofread this? And yeah. Uh, wow. Reservations. Like I had Betty uh, book my dog's uh, grooming appointment uh, the other day. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so I mean, I, I, anything you just know just to prove a point mind you you're, you're, you're I, I know you're you know you're a busy ceo but you you just did that to prove a point right you, you were so busy that you <laughs> i use it a lot it's kind of funny now like i'm That's using it cool. a lot now just because but yeah i got yeah. unlimited credits and i'm like oh my god i'm running out of credits do i need to purchase <laughs> but um so yeah this is live now so if anybody that is listening mm. has slack i encourage you to go and add it to slack by clicking that button and just following and right prompting yeah. before free and anybody can test it out um, it's in beta test right now, which means you can test it for free as much as you want. Great. And uh, you just have to have Slack. Sure. And there's a frequently asked question. So there are some of the yeah. things I'm even kind of stumbling through. I can learn more about it there. This is yeah. fantastic. I mean, it's so exciting. So, so again, you, you think that this is almost, it runs parallel with, with, with gurus, right? If you think about that, gurus is more specifically about having someone there to, uh, be part of almost like a part of your team. This is someone who you just can call. You know, yeah, in an this is, is more of like concierge type services, right? Like tasks on demand. But um, yeah, Reverse Bruce is dedicated. So that's a dedicated monthly subscription with a dedicated person. That's your person. Right. Um, so this way we're the goal is, is that we're completing the marketplace so that we're the go to when it comes to like the task on demand, the, you know, kind of the talent on demand type. Um, so that's that's essentially part of the marketplace fantastic i love that i love the fact that you even thought of the idea that you needed to kind of move it away from the idea that people want one or two things done or five things done or whatever and not yes. necessarily a dedicated person that's going to uh be there on a on a semi semi regular basis let me right. go to i want to show the website as well for um of course what we talked about earlier which is which is the main uh business here uh virtual gurus you can see that everybody is virtualgurus.com and if i go up to the services i think this will give us a better indication of some of the things we talked about today um, and searching for the perfect virtual assistant. So this whole idea, as you can see, it's not just, you know, I think again, the, the idea some people have of a virtual assistant might be just literally about emails and, and, and returning maybe some voicemail or things like that. But there's all kinds of things that we're talking about. We're talking about even social media and marketing, mm -hmm. writing, blogging, all these kinds of activities. Yeah. You have a, you know, we have this basically a, a group of people that are sitting there waiting that can be matched up with you in, in, in a perfect way. So um, I see. And, you know, we're redoing the website. Actually, it's getting, we're rebranding or it's not rebranding. We're doing a brand refresh actually right now as we speak. Okay. So in about a month and a half or so that'll launch. Um, but uh, the website will have a better uh, videos of every different task or service type deal. But it basically look at us as your back full back office support. So, you know, back in the days, and it's kind of funny when you say this back in the days, but you go into an <laughs> office building and somebody's sitting at the front desk. Hi, Peter, how can I help you? Who are you here to see? Like, think True. of us as, as the people that do everything from your printing, your scanning to your marketing. We do the social media. We do your bookkeeping, um, all EA executive assistance type services. And, uh, you know, even, yeah, we even have video editors, podcast editors, right? Uh, we have event managers, webinar managers, we have everything there, um, that, uh, you know, just full back office support. So you essentially your business in a box, right? You're running the business uh, or yeah. just your back end support. So you can do what you do best. Right. Wow. wow. We need you to know. talk. Hey, everything you just listed there, I know how to do. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to be, a, I need to be a virtual guru. I'm a virtual right. guru. <laughs> I mean, okay. fractional services is the next big thing, right? So if you right. look at it, fractional services are huge right now. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge market. 
That makes a ton of, ton of sense. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I, that. So again, everybody, I want to make sure that, uh, again, there's two distinctive pro product lines, if you will, but the virtualgurus.com is, 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 is the predominant business that we were speaking about today, but askbetty.io, check out that. And that has to be in conjunction with Slack. Is that true, Bobby? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so for now it's, it's okay. only in conjunction with Slack. Um, it will be available to messenger and WhatsApp and, and Microsoft teams soon. Uh, right. but for now, yeah, just Slack. Okay, fantastic. Just like, hey, this is fantastic. And here, you know, just secretly, we already know, like, I, I, I'm excited about which uh, most people don't, and you don't have to make any comment. I just want to put it out to the universe because I know it's true that when you're building a tech company like this with this kind of um, vision, and I can see where you're picking up, um, you're, you're in these spaces that need to be filled and so on. I see some big players that are going to be out there floating around looking for people like you and just, I'm yeah. excited for your future. I cannot wait to see what happens over the next 24 to 36 months or sooner, but I'm just mm -hmm. thinking over the next 24, 36 months, as like you said, uh, you just said it. I mean, the idea that first of all, virtual, we've been pushed that way for the last 10, eight to 10 months. Um, and that's not going to change for a little while. And then certainly as business gets used to doing that, it's going to grow. And then of course, like you said, the piecemeal of tasks of mm -hmm. getting done, uh, you know, piece by piece kind of thing, itty bitty yeah. at the time. Right. You know, uh, yeah. that has and, and we called this, like the funny thing was, is even before the pandemic hit, we discussed, like, we knew like this is something that the world is going to turn to mm -hmm. is this type of service. And it's going to, you know, like remote work is the next, is the big thing now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so why not make an agency that is able to provide that, um, and the fractional support that all businesses and entrepreneurs need. Right. Um, so, I mean, we're not the only one doing it. And I mean, gosh, there's people who have made ways for us and have, have paved the way for us. Sure. Um, we're just doing it a little bit more modernized way. And, and I yeah. think that, uh, you know, um, we're, we're, we're not, I don't think we're the next big unicorn of Calgary, but I certainly do think that we are, um, a company that is is up and coming in your right uh, most possibly will be acquired within the next couple of years so we'll see yeah <laughs> happy, happy <for laughs> awesome i'm happy happy for you let me let me ask you this question before we have some fun we're gonna have some fun before you go okay i know uh, okay. I, if this hasn't been fun for you it, it, it'll get, it, <laughs> it'll get better it, it'll get better let me ask you this uh it's been a tough tough year um and, and you know you could you could almost say that for for many years if you're an entrepreneur that's for sure every year seems to be uh, have challenges for everything, um, for your business, for yourself personally, and so on. What kinds of things, let, let me ask you this, not just even as a CEO, but even as a person, what, what things keep you hopeful? What keeps you optimistic these days? Um, me, it's, it's, it's provide that I'm able to provide work to people. Um, you know, so I wake up in the morning thinking, you know, like I, I know that I'm, giving work to people and, and I'm, I'm helping people's lives thrive and that just makes me feel good. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, just optimistic about just, I, I am optimistic about the future. Um, I think that if anything that's going to come out of this last year is that it's probably taught every single person a lesson about a themselves and, and B about their current situations and everything. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a saying that my mom used to always say, but doesn't knock you down will only make you stronger, right? Sure. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, one of the words for me has come from, uh, and I think I've heard this word a lot, gratitude, obviously. I mean, just realize yeah. instead of focusing on all the things that, you know, you don't have or are going wrong versus, you know, what you do have and what seems mm -hmm. to be right. And uh, for me, it's been getting back to the basics, just just appreciate you when people say, oh, I got, you know, I'm stuck at home. Well, you know what? Some people can't say they're stuck at home because they don't have one, for example. Yes. So for me, exactly. I, I just keep reminding myself. And so as I push through, that's what keeps me a little bit hopeful and optimistic is that just like you said, Dave, if it hasn't beaten you to your knees, then uh, yeah. it'll make you stronger and, and you know, we're going to get yeah. through. Yeah, take so. everything as a learning experience, you know? Absolutely. Okay, let's yeah. have some fun. Let's have yeah. some fun. Time to have some fun. You know, uh, what? I, this, is, this is actually... Um, less applicable to you than it is to some people and here's the reason why i say this with all due respect is that i love the fact that you live and and share your life on your sleeve you just you just put your heart on your sleeve and you there's no secrets you just you like you said be you you know, be bold be brave and be used mm -hmm. i love that so but on on these kinds of uh interviews or even on linkedin you know you don't really get to know people you don't know them so uh yeah. i figured out a way to do that to have some fun which is something i call this or that this or that 
Okay. <laughs> so, so all it is is I'll just I'll just say two things and you just pick one of them and it'll give us a little insight into uh, Bobby Joe. Who's Bobby Joe? Which okay. is all about. It's not going to it's not going to share everything, but it, you know, just give us an idea. <laughs> you know, if we ever if we ever get to hang out with her, then this is this is where we need to go. So let's start with okay. something. Let's start with something simple. Whiskey or wine? Wine. Wine. Okay. Red, red or white on that? Just curious. Red. Red. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. Love that. <laughs> uh, Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse? Uh, gosh. Uh, my my CEO, if she's listening, she's going to kill me. Um, I'm going to go with Bugs Bunny. She's oh. a huge Mickey Mouse fan. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and listen on Bugs, too. I love that. You pick them on Looney Tunes, right? Absolutely. <laughs> How about 60s music or 80s music? 60s, definitely. Hands down. Really? Rock and roll is my, my, that's my, uh, soul is, yeah. I love it. Okay. Well, if you're going back to the sixties, stones or Beatles? Oh, I'm going to go with the stones. Yeah. It's nice, good. Call. Yeah. Okay. Listen, yeah. can't go wrong with the stones. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, eating, we're going to go out and uh, grab some food, Chinese food or Italian food. I think I'm going to, I think I would honestly go with Chinese food. I like them both. So yeah. I think I would say Chinese food based on. What I would eat right this moment because I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about tra travel wise, Europe or the Caribbean? Caribbean. Caribbean. Any particular island? Just curious. Oh gosh. I mean, I I I would go. I don't even know to be honest. I mean, just I love the Caribbean. I love I love South America. Like I love oh, going okay. down there. Like I I've been in Costa Rica many many times. In fact, I want to mm -hmm. buy a hotel out there. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Caribbean. Just. Just everyone, just make sure you can rewind that and hear that. Yeah, I'm just going to buy a hotel down there. And <laughs> I want to, yeah. <laughs> thus, thus, the two to three years from now, right? That's what we're doing. <laughs> so I already see the plan now that's forming forming here. Is that, uh, this, that I, I love it. But you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, Costa Rica, I have not been, by the way, uh, but just absolutely think it's spec. Yeah, I've heard it's super spectacular. I haven't been yeah. around the Belize area either. I haven't been around that area. But the Caribbean in general, uh, just I'm, I'm the same way. I love it. Love yeah. Europe because of the, being able to take great pictures and videos and all yeah. that. Kind of How about yeah. this? How about a sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Sunset. Okay. So are you an early riser as a CEO? Are you an early riser? I'm early riser. I mean, I'm up around six okay. ish and working. Um, but I'm not ever working super late. I'm in bed by 8 39, but I, I always go like I love the sunsets. Like I, I take a lot of photos of sunsets. Awesome. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. this one? Uh, how about 50, 50 million dollars in new funding today or guaranteed health until you're 100? Or getting what? Or guaranteed health until until 100. I would go with guaranteed health for sure. Really? Yeah, okay. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, million dollars right now? Yeah. No, I, I would. I want to make that 50 million and I, but I, I need the health to make the 50 million. So. Got it. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> How about this one? How about hope or freedom? Oh God, that's a hard one. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say freedom. Freedom. Oh. Why is that? Just curious. Why is that? I just think that, you know, everybody should just have the freedom to do, be them, you know, do what they need to do and, and not be afraid of it. And, you know, um, but I guess freedom comes with hope too. So, yeah. Yeah, they're intertwined yeah. in some degree. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean. It's always it's, yeah. it is. It's a hard question. I mean, it really it is hard. <laughs> it's fun to kind of think about. That's for sure. How about this? How about finish this sentence uh, for me, if you can? Um, I love my life because I love my life because of the people in it. Oh, that's a mic drop. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. It's just like just because there's the people that are in it. I yeah. <laughs> totally, totally relate to that. See, got a little insight there from uh, Bobby Joe, right there. there. Go. <laughs> about that. Don't want the fifty millions going to earn it. Going to buy a hotel in Costa Rica, drink red wine, watch some Bugs mm -hmm. Bunny, listen to the some Stones music, and order some Chinese food. I mean, <laughs> how can you? Can you how, how good sounds is that? dreamy to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. It sounds fantastic. I appreciate it. Hey. Hey, this, I, Bobby, I knew this was going to be awesome. Um, I love your story. So I, was, I just, I wanted to have you on because of that. Um, 
and and we know each other we've met each other just a couple times briefly so um i love your spirit but I, I, your story is so inspiring to people and uh and you know again 60 months ago you were you know a person looking for to be a virtual assistant you mm -hmm. i mean months ago everybody her life was completely different and uh, now she is uh, raising raising uh, equity and and building a, a multi-million dollar tech company here that's basically global it has a global reach for sure and yeah. uh, is going to continue to grow uh you're hiring people so that that tells you a lot i mean there's still you're still hiring people in your in your main office and you're taking on new people that uh that want to work for your company so so they can go to virtualgurus.com if people are, are interested to be kind of freelancers that kind of thing that want to uh apply there's it's a pretty straightforward application they can just jump on and do that yeah 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 go to the virtualgurus.com scroll all the way down or to the uh if you believe it's in the footer and it'll say become a virtual assistant um, and there's a pretty big application. It's about 15 minutes. Fill oh. that baby out and then uh, it'll go and then you'll follow the prompts from there. There is some onboarding and there's interview process, background checks, there's skill testing and stuff. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty thorough. Fantastic. So be prepared. Yeah. If you go to click that on, be prepared uh mm -hmm. because it is thorough so i appreciate you sharing your story i hope people will Thank go out and connect with you here on linkedin uh certainly investors and people that are interested in, in 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 your business as well i mean to reach out there's all kinds of reasons to reach out to bobby at this point uh keep watching the media because you have some cool things coming down the pipe i know you didn't <laughs> want to you I, I mean i don't know what they are specifically but i know you said that you can't tell me which is cool i get it <laughs> so yeah I know there's some cool things happening and askbetty.io as well is another, uh, you know, another amazing app that works with Slack. So check that out as well. Uh, wish you great success. I hope you're, uh, I hope everything just rocks and rolls for you in the, in the next 12 months. We'll, we'll be what, or, and farther we'll be watching and, uh, we'll do this again. I hope we do this again. Yeah, I think we should. It was great. It was fun. Yeah, Thank appreciate you. that. Hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this and, uh, and, uh, you know, I'll just leave you with simple and really something really simple. Be kind out there. Hey, why not? Just be kind out there. Kind. Okay, everybody. We'll see you next time. Right. So Bye. I found a new friend, and uh, we traded uh, a pen um, for this soccer ball. And I thought it was really nice because I just gave him the pen because he'd been helping uh, helping me throughout the day to learn uh, Kinyarwanda. And uh, he's a very smart boy, knows English very well. Very good English. Yes. So I gave him a pen, um, which they love pens. And um, 15, 10, 15 minutes later, he came back and gave me a ball for the trade. So I just thought that was really, really cool because I didn't ask for it. So, so, um, yeah, Peter. Yeah, so he gave me that. So I'm really, really happy about that. And I'll be bringing this back to Canada. And uh, yeah, I thought it was awesome. He's, he's a really, really, really clever kid. He's going to be an English teacher. Professor. Professor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.